Hey everybody, welcome back to Word Balloon. Welcome League of Word Balloon listeners. It's me, John Suntress, with another Friday release. And man, I gotta tell you, Susan Eisenberg is always one of my favorite guests. Literally, from our first conversation, I could tell that we were going to be friends because we absolutely love the same stuff. She is an old-time radio aficionado. In fact, she does uh, audio drama beyond working in animation, and he's even been involved with uh, the brand new suspense series that, kind of like the new Twilight Zone, pays respect to the classic radio show from uh, the 40s through the 60s. Suspense was literally one of the last radio shows to be on the ra- on the, the air in the early 60s, wrapping things up. And um, they do great suspense stories. It's a horror anthology show, uh, much like in the vein of Outer Limits and Twilight Zone. Not as fantasy-oriented, a little more straight-up horror and drama, but great stuff. And Susan is a voice on that. Uh, also, of course, uh, she just did a Star Trek Discovery audiobook, her first audiobook. And we talk a bit about that, but mainly... Come on. Susan Eisenberg is the animated Amazon. She is Wonder Woman of the Justice League animated series that started on uh, the WB back in the day in 2000 and continued for five seasons and became Justice League Unlimited in in mid-run and uh, featured incredible actors along with her. Seven incredible actors and uh, really left an impact on uh, television animation, Cart- uh, superhero cartoons and uh, how awesome is Susan she led the cause you've seen the hashtag on social media that said JL reunion this group of seven actors really is a company like in the vein of a great theater company or a great acting troupe that does a lot of projects together from classic cinema to even current cinema and um, the Justice League is no exception And the great thing is, Susan really kind of led the way and and warped up the fans because we've all been telling her and uh, George Newbern and and Barry, excuse me, I always get his name wrong, and uh, Kevin Conroy and Mike Rosenblum and, uh, you know, all the rest, Carl Lumley and uh, Phil Lamar, uh, that, hey, we love Justice League. We want to see more stuff. More importantly, she properly organized this and said, well, we like hearing it, the cast, but if you really want to turn heads... Tell Warner Animation you want more Justice League. Bruce Tim is back producing. It's the classic Justice League look as far as animation goes. And it's the uh, Toon Trinity of George and Kevin and Susan as uh, Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman leading the Justice League against the Fatal Five. It is an excellent new animated movie. It's been available to stream and uh, purchase digitally. Uh, since the end of March, and it is coming to DVD and Blu-ray on April 16th, this coming Tuesday. So I had to get Susan on to uh, talk about the return of the Toon Trinity, as I like to call them. And, uh, you know, again, this is hopefully the first step in getting what we all want, both the cast and the producers and Andrea Romano, the incredible voice director, and Bruce Tim, the wonderful des- character designer and producer of uh, and showrunner, of uh, Justice League to bring the series back in movies. It wouldn't it be great to every year or every year or two get a new Justice League movie. Um, that's what they want. That's what we fans want. And uh, hopefully, again, Justice League versus Fatal Five is the first step in that direction. So beyond Kevin and uh, George and Susan as uh, Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. You also have Kevin Michael Richardson playing Mr. Ter- Terrific. You have uh, Daniela Bobadilla, who plays Ms. Martian. You've got um, Diane Garrow playing the Jessica Cruz Green Lantern. And you have Ellis Gable playing Thomas Keller, a.k.a. Starboy of the Legion of Superheroes, Obviously, if it's the Fatal Five, you know that the Legion likely plays a small role in this movie, and they do. You won't be disappointed. I don't want to spoil, but um, great nods to the Legion, great nods to the Justice League. Uh, it's it's terrific. It really is great. It's a shame that we don't have the full seven in this movie, but again, with hope, uh, this is the first step of many steps to to get the original seven back together, and it's a great introduction and, and kind of a mentorship of... Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman helping out these new heroes. And, of course, the time-lost Starboy, 
who, much like in the comics, doesn't have, he's bipolar in the comics, and he doesn't have uh, access to 31st century medicine here in the 21st century, and so his illness uh, isn't treated, and it makes him kind of fragile. And it's a, it's a great dramatic story, it's a fun action story, and uh, it'll pull on your heartstrings, and also just give you a real happy smile on your face when you realize that the Justice League is back, the real Justice League. No disrespect to any of the other Justice League animated products or anything that's come since. But it is great to see this cast. As I say, I compare them to uh, Alan Reed and uh, Mel Blanc doing the Flintstones from the early 60s till their respective uh, deaths. Um, you know, these these voices gave three dimensions to these characters in a way that uh, has never been seen. And uh, five years means a lot, and not to mention the subsequent 14 years of syndication that uh, followed the initial run on Cartoon Network of that incredible show. And uh, as I said, you know, Saturday morning's on the WB and the CW. And, um, you know, it's it's had a wonderful afterlife. So we talk all about that. We talk about some of Susan's favorite episodes, uh, other projects where she's been able to play Wonder Woman. And uh, again, Wonder Woman, and thank God for the Patty Jenkins movie. Um, I think there's more focus now than ever on Wonder Woman, and Susan reaps the benefits and can proudly include herself in the Wonder Woman pantheon of Linda Carter and Gal Gadot uh, as a rightful, uh, you know, uh, heir to the uh, Amazon mantle. So, all right, lofty talk, but uh, also, again, she's delightful, and truly, uh, I I love our conversations, and it's been about two years since I've talked to her. Happy to have her back to have something new to talk about and something fun to talk about. And wow, next year, 20th anniversary of Justice League. So hopefully what's going on this year, and she's at a bunch of conventions. She talks about that. She and the cast were just together at WonderCon watching the movie for the first time with Bruce Tinn. Uh, I really hope that, uh, you know, these guys and women get to have a, an impressive victory lap. It's well-deserved uh, in terms of um, the body of work they've done with these characters and hopefully what's to come in the future. Let's make this happen. Let's support this movie. Justice League versus The Fatal Five. Susan Eisenberg, Wonder Woman herself, joins us for the full hour on Word Balloon. Brought to you by the League of Word Balloon listeners. Thank you, League, for your support via Patreon. I keep saying it and I mean it. You guys have been a great help to me uh, during my uh, illness and recovery, and I uh, couldn't do it without you. I thank you. Word Balloon is free. It'll always be free. But if you want to help the cause out, if you like what I do here and want to subscribe to Word Balloon, you can go to patreon.com slash Word Balloon or click on the front page of wordballoon.com and click on that Patreon ad. It'll take you to my Patreon site. Thank you. Thank you for your support, League of Word Balloon listeners. Social media makes a difference in positive ways. And let's not forget that as we kind of deal with the uh, culture-divided wars that we face ourselves with. We can all unite on things that we love, like Justice League. And uh, I feel a a big um, part of that as well with the contributions of the League of Word Balloons listeners. So thank you again for your support. Word Balloon is also brought to you by Aftershock Comics, who are an incredible independent publisher featuring a lot of great names that you know as far as artists and writers go, and even the editorial staff. Mike Martz, who led the Batman office at DC, and the X-Men office at Marvel, and Joe Pruitt, one of my favorite uh, editor-publishers with uh, Caliber and Desperado Comics over the 90s and into the 2000s. Now they've come together at Aftershock Comics, the industry's fastest-growing independent publishing company, They are proud to introduce you to a bunch of new, fresh concepts and invite you to read dangerously, as they call 2019, the year of reading dangerously. Great books with great names. Marguerite Bennett's Animosity, Garth Ennis' A Walk Through Hell, Cullen Bunn's Dark Ark, Donny Cates' Baby Teeth. Also new books with uh, my pal Phil Hester and Ryan Kelly doing Stronghold. Oberon, a new supernatural series from Ryan Parrott. Dark Red from Tim Seeley about a vampire living in rural America. Garth Ennis has also got a new military uh, graphic novel called Out of the Blue and also a great new series called Horde. Horde, not Whore. Horde, like, you know, a bad group of people. A gang, a horde. Uh, Great genres, taking readers beyond their comfort zones. In the week's ad, we'll be talking to more uh, Aftershock creators about their books. You don't have to wait. You'll find full story descriptions, preview pages, and the diamond codes on these books to order through your local shop at aftershockcomics.com. 
Com. You know, uh, my laptop was acting up, so uh, Susan, Susan and I talked for about a half hour off the record just to kind of get comfortable. And as you'll see as I start the recording, we're laughing. And, you know, I, obviously she, she finds it funny that when I find out something cool, I always go, yay. That's something my group of friends have always done. And uh, I know it sounds silly to hear from a grown man the word yay. But it's it's genuinely felt as far as this reunion of uh, Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman from the Justice League cartoon coming back together with this brand new film, Justice League versus the Fatal Five. And uh, this is the woman that really has spearheaded the hashtag jail reunion that we've seen online. Fan causes are the best causes because we're the customers. We're letting the studios know this is the product we want. Yeah, we like what you're giving us, but don't forget, you have the ability... Warner Brothers Studio to make new Justice League product with these actors and actresses. We want to see it happen. We love that you've started with the Trinity getting back together with Justice League versus Fatal Five. Let's keep the ball rolling. So to talk about it, here's Susan Eisenberg, Wonder Woman, on Word Balloon. Do you have a place to go or something? I mean, how much time have you got? No, I'm good. Oh, great. I'm available. Yay. Anyway, all right. Here we go. (laughs) Can I? I'm always delighted to talk. Say, I mean, I'm going to even start with this, with us laughing and being happy talking to each other, because I'm, well, I'm and thrilled. And I'm actually giddy, because I see, like, other questions, which I think is oh, so great. adorable. Excellent. I'm, uh, I, if you can't tell, I've, I've set up the connection to Thermoscara, and I'm uh, speaking to uh, the animated Amazon herself, Susan Eisenberg, Wonder Woman from the <laughs> Justice League. Welcome back, buddy. Good to hear from you. Well... Thank you. Thanks for having me back. Oh, my God. You know. And we were just talking about this for, like, literally... Have we talked? To, we have been talking for a half hour, just catching up and everything. And you, seriously, you're a champ. And I thank you for being concerned. Everything's good. I told you that in the wrap-up and everything. But, no, everything's going good. And I'm I'm just happy as hell to talk to you again. Well, thank you for having me back on. And that was my first question because um, I, we follow each other. And I just want to know that you were okay, you know, Thanks, and that buddy. things were on the up and up with with you and just like you were healing and doing better. Thank you. Yes. No, everything's going good. And I know. And like I said, I'm bummed. Um, I told you off the air and stuff. They're not they're not letting me travel for kind of a year, not till next January. So I, right. And you, you know, heard me gasp when you told me. Yeah. That. Well, and also I imagine and we're, we're going to get into Fatal Five. But um I, you know, yeah. Are are you doing a tour for this this year? I mean, are you, are they putting you out there to to talk about this at the various cons, or have cons reached out and said, "Of course, we want Susan to show up." You know what? I was lucky enough to have a bunch of bookings even before the movie, so it just becomes like you know icing on the cake. But we did, we just did WonderCon in Anaheim, Great. and it was Kevin and Bruce, and Bruce Tim, mm-hmm. Kevin Conroy, and George Newburn. Awesome. So I got to see the movie um, with them. We were like, we're all sitting together to watch it. And that was, you know, that was really fun and, and thrilling, actually. I thought it turned out great. Um, I certainly got it streaming and was happy to watch it. And uh, all right, let's get off. Let's get this out of the way. I did not know <laughs> until I watched Rob Paulson on the Nerdist channel yeah. interview you. And, folks, it's on YouTube, and you should absolutely watch it because I guess it happened – or they released it like only like last week or whatever. But they had Susan right. and the rest of the cast, the original Justice League cast. Carl, cast, Carl Lumley was the only person not with everybody as far as the regulars. Right. Exactly. And yep. hilarious conversation. And Rob pointed out that the reason why the original cast is back together again for this Justice League cartoon is because Susan spearheaded the effort and gathered the troops. And I and I realize, of course, that it's self-evident watching all of you interact that you are a real acting company and that you really have for, you know fostered this kind of relationship in five years. But and I knew I was following the hashtags jail reunion. We all were on Twitter and and the like all all over social media. I didn't realize. I just figured you were just another part person in Spartacus's army. I didn't realize you were Spartacus. Nice going. <laughs> I am Spartacus. Damn straight. Um, but you know there. I know, but there's there's a lot of help with being Spartacus, as you know. Um, so <laughs> a lot of people are standing there with me. And being Spartacus as well. So there's, you know, there there are um, there are Twitter accounts that have been set up just 
just to help promote the jail reunion and the Justice League versus the Fatal Five. That was all conceived and and even done most of it um, before the jail reunion was really uh, became a force. And I think that Bruce and Jim Krieg and and Sam Liu, the director, they were all like, "Okay, this is really happening. This whole thing is become huge." So, I mean, you'd have to ask Bruce, but he, I think that fed into this whole thing of like using us for the the movie and starting out with the Trinity. And Bruce said recently at the uh, at WonderCon that if this movie does well. Um, he'd absolutely be open to having a a movie that is involves all seven of us, that and that fun. was, yeah, it would be great, and it would be something I think that's long overdue, and um, you know, it would be just so gratifying if that were to happen with Bruce at the helm, because it has to be Bruce, you know, it has to be his vision of all. I mean, seeing her, you know, seeing Wonder Woman, the Wonder Woman that you saw in the movie that she looked like the original Justice League Wonder Woman, you know, that was glorious. I didn't know that that was going to happen until I went to do ADR. And, um, and then I saw her and it was just like, are you kidding me? It's her again. And yeah. And Bruce is like, yeah, we're going with the the original um, Justice League character drawings. And I was like, I I mean, I was the clumped. I was, I think I cried. I get it. No, I get, Hey, seriously, how many animated series you have to go back to things like the Flintstones in terms of literally like the <laughs> cast staying together and working together for years. I mean, it just doesn't happen in modern animation. You know that better than I do. And again, the chemistry between all of you and Bruce, obviously, and Andrea Romano, who we were talking about off the air. Right. And God, mm-hmm. it would, I know she's, re- you know, air quotes, retired, but I, I mean, I saw... Was it at DenverCon where she said, I'd love to get back and, you know, direct these people? And I hope she meant it. Yeah, she did. She did. She, like, grabbed the mic and she said, you know, if if it comes back, I promise I'll come out of retirement to wow. direct it. And I, you know, I practically fell off my chair because, yeah. um, you know, there's such support for it. And I've always believed there was support from the fans. So to have support um, from Bruce and Andrea, I mean, that just means the world. And, you know... We didn't know when we were doing the show that it would be as, I mean, iconic as it's become. Yes. And you don't know that you're going to be associated with these characters for years to come. You don't know when you're doing that in the studio at Warner Brothers. Um, but now we do know, and it really feels magical when we're together. It really does. And we get into those characters and Hawk Girl and, and yeah. Green Lantern are going out. You know, it's just, it's, it's, it's really a special thing to be a part of. I get it. And again, um, here, and I know you're an old time radio fan as well. You guys are like the animated Mercury players. I mean, in terms yeah. of you guys really click yeah, well together like- and you know, you've put your stamp on this and also the whole idea that, I mean, you know, I, I confess to you my, my, my age being 54 and everything, but I was watching your show from day one and it was great. Other friends of mine, the same age, that used to watch, you know, the Super Friends and Red Comics, and they fell out of the habit. And once they saw your show, would like literally they we'd watch it together, and a wife would walk in who just wasn't hip to the world, and she's like, "Why are you watching a cartoon?" And it was just great to see my friend go, "Honey, you don't understand. These people are really acting, and this is like the most sophisticated portrayal." Of the Justice League I've ever seen. It's really, really good. It is adult level good. And that was a great thing. It was a y, it was a smart Y7 show that didn't speak down to the original audience. And now these Y7 kids, they're 27. So they're thrilled. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's exactly. fantastic. And you know, it's fantastic. It, it is. And also, you know, just to speaking to that point, um, there are so many people who have that I've met through the cons and on social media that will tell me how... Um, brilliant they thought the scripts were yes. and that's that's everything right there story. i mean the fact yes. that we had Dwayne, right the stories Dwayne McDuffie and yes. Rich Fogel and Stan Berkowitz yep. and i mean it would just on and on um Paul Dini yes um you know <laughs> just great i mean these were these were people who like loved them loved comics knew the world they weren't you know they they 
they had a passion for it and it comes through. And then we were lucky enough to say their words and to tell their stories. And, um, you know, that just, for me, that was like the biggest gift of my professional career, of my professional life. And we wouldn't, you and I wouldn't be talking today if I hadn't had that happen in 2000. 100%. Wow. 2000. That's insane. Seriously. I, and yep. again, I, that's why yep. I, I was going to ask how long, you know, since the beginning, 2000. Amazing. But that's the great thing. And y'all, you all sound great. I love and truly I can't recommend enough watching Rob Paulson's video and uh, his his cartoon interview show that's on YouTube. And you'll find it easily. Just even do Rob Paulson Justice League. You'll find it. But uh, such such great memories and stories. And again, a great peer to peer conversation because Rob certainly understands being part of, you know, uh, well-loved, you know, animated series. And also just the stories of working with the Mel Blanks and the Jonathan Winters that he was kind of conveying to you guys. But also, it's again, it's this company of actors that, and, and Andrea's uh, direction and, and all the guys that we mentioned writing and everything. No, great stories, great direction. Andrea brought an adult level to your performances. And I'm sure as you as she coached newbies, to, you know, be probably a little more real as opposed to the kind of animation we grew up with where, uh, the you know, the stuff from the 70s and 80s, nothing wrong with it, but the, the acting was but a little more, different. It was more, yeah, it was, it was, you know, it was broader, it was yeah. more cartoony and, you know, Andrea always had us grounded and, um, and you know, it was quite sophisticated and I think people who don't, and I'm, I did not grow up reading comic books. I didn't watch a lot of cartoons. So I've really been educated since the show. Um, and, you know, you recognize how lucky you are to be a part of something that was quite sophisticated with all this extraordinary talent. I mean, the acting talent, we do get a lot of um, attention, but there's so much more. It's such a big collaboration. And there are so many elements that went into the Justice League, like Batman, the animated series, like Superman, the animated sure. series, that, you know, it, they live on to this day because they were so brilliant. This movie, the new movie is yeah. great because it really plays on two levels. And that's been mm -hmm. one of the good things about the new animated movies. They introduce new characters. Um, yep. It really, it's a good hand in hand thing of seeing the old guard of the justice league as they break in Jessica Cruz and uh, Megan, Miss Martian and uh Starboy. And I, and I love, yep. I love Starboy. I read that original Oof. comic story that it was based on, I'm guessing, that Jeff Johns and Brad Meltzer wrote, where poor Starboy is, you know, bipolar and can't get the thirty first century meds he needs to be okay. So he's a little more panicky and, you know, definitely a little more on, you know, uh, stressed out and obviously not maybe not making sense. And uh no, that was great. I really think they handled it in a good way. And also something we talked about off the air. Um, because I know uh, fans are likely concerned or curious if this is a continuation of the continuity of the television series. And, mm -hmm. you know, you told me and I, I, I mean, I kind of I kind of knew as a general rule. And my assumption is, no, it's not. These these stories are kind of self-contained. And um, the events that happen in Fatal Five without going into detail shocked me at the end and in a good way. And also right. reminded me that it's like this is a self-contained movie. Things can happen differently as they have in other movies. Or even when um, Kevin and Tara Strong did um, Killing Joke. And even though right. it's, it's Kevin and Tara and everything, and we you know we love them from the animated series, that's its own continuity. And it should be. So that was cool. So am I right? Is that the assumption that it is kind of its own thing? It is and it's not. You know, and I think that Bruce and Eric Carrasco, who wrote it, Jim Krieg, um, who co-wrote it. Mm -hmm. I mean, they would be able to speak to it better than I, but I believe that there is some continuity. Um, and I don't want to get into <laughs> trouble it's cool. with, yeah, yeah, with, yeah. Um, with anyone, but I believe that there is some carryover, you know, from, from the Justice sure. Unlimited series to this movie. And there are things, there are holes, if you will, but that's because maybe some, like I saw Eric today wrote things happened in the story that maybe we didn't see on this screen, but they're, so they're there. They happened, but we didn't necessarily as an audience see them. Understood. Yes. So he said, you know, there is um, 
there is a connection to Justice League Unlimited, who, and Eric, I should point out, is a huge fan of the original series and was deeply influenced by the original series. So I think there is some carryover from Unlimited to this movie. But again, you, it allows you, like, to have these other stories to be told. But what I loved was you had the theme music, the music yes, cues. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, dynamic Partners. Dynamic Partners, they put in those music cues. I mean, you, it gave me chills because you would have these moments with Wonder Woman or Superman or Batman that that um, harkened back to the, the series. <laughs> and if so if you were a fan, you got to see that. But then if, if you had never watched the show... You're introduced to these the Star Boy and Jessica Cruz, and you didn't need to have seen the other show to 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 care about these characters. And I should say that it was really, really moving to me. And I give Warner Brothers and DC so much credit that they like a lot like that they tackled this. They tackled this whole idea of mental illness and these young people, you know, dealing with mental illness. And yes. I thought it was very, very brave and Agreed. very honestly portrayed i mean uh, very forthright this is not for um you know a six-year-old to watch i mean it's it's very intense agreed no absolutely and and again they've been they've been doing this with the animated movies and i appreciate it as well because there are a couple generations of us now that have been watching cartoons since saturday mornings when we were kids but we are adults now and because of the japanese example of Akira and countless television series and movies that they've made, it's like, well, the rest, of, and, and certainly the French do it as well, and, and the other countries, mm -hmm. Persepol Persepolis, an amazing mm -hmm. animated adult movie. It's like, right. okay, America, there's no reason not to graduate with everyone else. I understand there's concern uh, that they are selling Justice League birthday cakes and pajamas and, uh, you know, things, uh, product for children and, you know, that... The IPs are used in that way as well. But this is good that they are moving in this direction. And they have been for many movies. And I completely agree with you, uh, both the way they handle mental illness and also the mentorship that the old guard is yeah. giving to Jessica Cruz yeah. and Megan. And Megan is great. Yeah. That was a surprise. And I'm sorry if I'm spoiling. Uh, I don't think so. I think they've. Uh, they, I think she was in the. Yeah, crash. no, they've talked about it. Yeah, and, you know, the, I loved the Jessica Cruz and yes. uh, Wonder Woman relationship. Yes. That was really, you know, very. You know, I, I loved seeing Wonder Woman be this mentor to Jessica Cruz, and um, you know, Wonder Woman is she's she's more mature. And again, like I don't put an age on her, so it's not like oh she's like at least thirty five now. You know, it's not like she has an age because to me she's ageless. But I love that she's just a very secure like um, superhero, and she's mentoring this young girl who just is very lost and and scared. And I I, I thought it was a very touching relationship. I'd love to see more of that Agreed. down the road. Absolutely, and I do hope. That and Starboy, gosh, he, he, like that ending made me cry, like, yeah. cry. It was so touching. And, yes. you know, for people, these animated movies or, you know, or poo poo them, I mean, they're just, you know, I have no time for those people <laughs> because they're really well done. They really are. They're yeah. so well done. Well, that's the thing. It's this sophistication, again, that started with mm -hmm. Andrea and everybody kind of saying, no, let's, let's up the game a little bit back in, you know, 2000. And, no, that's the great thing, this evolution with DC Animation. And I've I've talked about this with James Tucker, both on the record and off the record, and uh, some of the others as, as I've had the opportunities to. And, and, yeah, it's great. And we love it, and I've really appreciated that. And it's a point you make in the Rob Paulson video. The studio's listening to the fans. The fans came out and said, no, we want this. We want these stories. These are some of the best, I mean, for the adaptations they've done. And, and just the spirit of the Justice League show is so important to the fandom that, yeah, it's like, no, no. I mean, we, we're always appreciative of the new stuff and even the new actors that step in the roles. But it's like, again, this is something special. And this is a big part of a lot of adults' childhoods when they when they watch it or yeah, adults that are like myself that we were just younger adults, you know, 19 years ago. And it's great. It's, it's wonderful. So I'm glad they're listening. Yeah, and I think that for the fans, I think that that relationship where they, um, 
many of them were introduced to these characters through the Justice League or Batman the Animated Series or Superman. So their connection to the characters is um, experienced through these voices and through this animation. And that that really, it, it it's very nostalgic and it's very powerful. And when people tell me that they when they read the comics, they hear our voices... I, I hear that all the time, and I think that there is such a value in that. And Absolutely, you know, it, it, it is one of the reasons why the Justice League reunion has mattered so much to me because I've had this dialogue with the fans, and many of them have become friends at this point. But I've I've just heard it over and over and over again. And of course, you're going to have different actors playing the roles and I understand that completely sure. and you're going to have celebrities do it because the celebrities obviously have a wider audience and a wider following. I'm not naive about that. I get sure. that. But I think at the same time you can respect the history and the devotion that the fans have developed over all these years to the actors and to these characters. And I think that respecting that is very important. Well, and again, we grew up with a tradition as far as animation goes where can you – I mean, thank God they finally found uh, sound-alikes that, that sound enough like Mel Blanc that you can continue to do the Looney Tunes characters with a degree right, of respect. Exactly. And really no yep. disrespect to Mel's son, Noel, who I think was always uncomfortable kind of being forced to take over dad's business and everything. And right, so, right. And you, yeah, know, yeah. and you knew from interviews – I mean, my God – I, anytime Mel was on camera, I would always be like, "Oh my god, I got to watch Mel Blanc. He's amazing." And he would be, "Oh, mm-hmm. you know, he sounds just like me." He sounds, and it's like, "Well, not really, but okay. We love you, Mel. It's cool, you know." But but that's the thing, you know. And I mean, you know, Alan Reed and and Mel doing Bar- Barney and, and uh, Fred and everything. I mean, these were important right, right, voices. Right. And and yeah, so we come from that tradition. So thankfully, as much as there is, and I don't mean this in a negative way, stunt casting with celebrities in animation. Um, no, there's something to be said for no. This is what Wonder Woman sounds like. This is what Batman sounds like, and I love the love that Kevin and Mark Hamill get for their Batman Joker dynamic. And it's so yes. great to see. I mean, again, we all knew it watching it initially. Um, it's great that so many critics are now uh, legitimate for their place and can say, "Hey, taking nothing away from Michael Keaton or you know Christian Bale or your fa- or Ben Affleck or your favorite Batman or your favorite Jokers." These guys really get the characters, and we want to see them do their most intense scenes. And certainly, moving forward, I hope you get these opportunities, because clearly there's really been a great awakening to Wonder Woman's power. Everyone kind of rediscovered again, thankfully. Thankfully, you know, Patty and and Gal made such a great movie, and everyone else involved with it. And it only... It only I obviously benefits, you know, what you guys did and what you know what you do with Wonder Woman. And that's the great thing. I mean, there really is this like Wonder Woman Mount Rushmore and it's so great to know and especially knowing you that everyone's like, Well, of course Linda Carter and of course Gal Gadot. But it's like and don't forget Susan Ivensburg. My God, she's the best, you know, animated Wonder Woman. And it's like, Yeah. <laughs> you know, so that's no, that's it's, great, it's, man. You know. It is. It is. And it's it's having the Wonder Woman um, movie be as successful as it was and having Patty just Patty just is such a fan of Wonder Woman and appreciates the character so deeply was a huge she was a huge fan of Linda Carter um, and the history of the character. So having that, you know, that movie just blow up as it did. It definitely helped me because it brought more attention to the character. And, you know, having played a small part in that narrative, it's, um, you know, it's it, it's a big deal. It feels very, very um, rewarding to just even be a, be a small part of that. But also beyond the series, and we've talked about it in previous conversations, your participation in Injustice, some of the other uh, online games – where you've got yeah. to, you know, re- reprise it. And also, I got I should ask you to get this out of the way, uh, comparing playing Wonder Woman to Mara, because you were Mara in a Lego Aquaman movie. <laughs> um, you know, that was Brandon Vietti. Brandon does the uh, Young Justice, and he also does a lot of the Lego movies. And he and I were at a, a con together in Palm Springs, and he said... 
you know, I'd love to work with you one time. You know, we should work together. And I said, Brandon, anytime you want, you know, I'm an actor. You, you, you call and I will show up. Outstanding. And to his, you know, to his credit, he, six months later, I got a call and my agent said, you know, there's an offer to, for you to play Mira. And I, my only concern was that she didn't sound like Wonder Woman. Sure. Um, you know, because I just didn't, I wanted to give the fans something else. And I was so pleased when I saw the final part. I'm a huge Lego fan to begin with. Oh, God, yeah, they're I hilarious. Mean, even the, even the direct-to-video the direct kids movies are, you know, as funny as the major releases as well. It's good stuff. And I just love how they look, and I'm just, I'm enamored by the whole the whole franchise. So to me, it was like a bucket list thing. I was like, <laughs> oh, I get to, I get to play a Lego character, and it gets, and Amira. She's, you know, she's magnificent. So she's a queen. She's fabulous. So, yeah, it was a total treat. And it, and it kept me in D.C., um, but it just allowed me to, you know, spread my <clears throat> wings a little, Absolutely. which was lovely. <laughs> Absolutely. No, that's, again, that's great. And, hey, why, why should, you know, thank God. And it's so great that, again, history has corrected itself. And for years, June Ferre was re referred to as the female Mel Blanc, but when the reality was... Uh, Mel was the female or was the male June Foray, you know, the the, right. the great June right. Foray. And that's the thing, man. It's like, no, you are an actor and you are a great actor. So, hell yes, let's see you play more than one role. Chris Evans gets <laughs> to be the human torch in Captain America. You know, it's... Uh, oh, real, it's so funny you should bring up Chris Evans because I just tweeted about him because he was he was tweeting about, like, his, do his first dog because it's National Pet Day today, and he, he was tweeting pictures of his first dog, and I'm like, really, Captain America? Like, <laughs> could you be more perfect? Just stop with the perfection. And I, I mean, I just, I, I'm, I just love him so because he's, he really is that good guy. Yes. And, yes. Um, and he goes out on a limb and he, you know, talks truth. Yes. And I just so respect him. So it's funny you should mention him because I was just fawning over him earlier. I hope. <laughs> I, how's, how's, how's your dog doing? My, I have two now. Oh, and, um, nice. I, we, we, yeah, we adopted a senior dude um, who's about 13, and we adopted him out of a shelter, and he, he's doing great. So we have Oliver and we have Bravo, and they're both, you know, they're both doing well. Oliver, thank you for asking. Uh, oh, absolutely. Anytime you put up your little Papa Love uh, pictures, I'm like, I, I know. I'm a sucker for dogs. I, I, I've only had one. And when when he passed, it really hit my me and my sister pretty hard. And it's like, let's oh, not it's, you know, let's not do this anymore. Was our response? I thought, yeah, no, it's it's really that kind of love. It's so deep. But yeah. um, you know, Oliver's only four, and he'll oh. he'll be five in June, so he's still young awesome. ish. Thank no, you. Yeah, beautiful dog, beautiful yellow lab. It's uh, right, yellow lab. Yes. Yes. Okay. I there you go. Good. Hell yeah. Well, I, I figured. You know, I, I'm not. I'm not enough of a dog person where I might identify every uh, kind of dog, but uh, mine was a cocker spaniel. He was a mutt. He was half cocker spaniel, half sheep dog, but he was great. And his name was, well, our my sister named him. It was Whiskers. And I'm like, oh, and I really wanted to name him Crypto because I love Superman and Superman's dog. I got voted again. They're like, no, 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 Whiskers. But at least I got to call him Whisk because he was a really fast runner. So I kind of feel like, all right, he could have been the Flash's dog. It's all right. And you never know, there may be another dog in your future. Maybe, maybe. I got to, I have to, you know, uh, get into a relationship because my hours are still, I mean, I live the bachelor life. Oh, that's true. And I would, no, hate, that's true. I would hate to, I would hate to subject an animal to having to wait to walk, you know, for me to walk him and stuff or her. And I do. And you so, travel a lot. Also, I do. And, and I love, that's and, a big thing. So I love my friend's dogs and that's fine. And I'm in a great apartment building where all my neighbors were all close and, and they have dogs all over the place. So I get to hang out with their dogs. So no, it's, it's, it's cool. And I do, I truly, I, I love, you know, and I've even managed to warm up to a couple cats, but enough of that. We'll uh, back to, <laughs> back to, back to, back to fatal five talk. Great movie. Okay. Um, it plays well on a lot of levels and I won't spoil, but, and I, and I hear what you're saying too, in terms of nods to justice league continuity. You kind of know where everybody is if they're not on camera, and that's right. good. Well, and there's there's some really wonderful, you know that the shot of of well, I don't want to give it away, but that be that wonderful shot where you see the other ca the other members of the league. Yes, um, you see Hawk. I'm like, oh, that just gave me chills. That whole scene that was so beautifully done. So there is definitely a nod, and 
again, I mean, I think if, you know, for Bruce to say if this movie does well and he sees there's a following there, he will definitely revisit the Justice League Unlimited with all of us. And, um, you know, we, we, I just ask everyone out there who, who will listen to your podcast to support the movie so that can happen. Absolutely. You can get it on streaming now. And if you want to get the physical right. DVDs, they come out on the uh, 16th. Correct. Right. Blu-ray and DVD are April 16th. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, did you do, did they have you do uh, special features, any interviews and stuff about coming back and everything? Yeah. Yeah. No, we did. Well, it was all before. It was like, again, this was done before jail reunion really took flight. Okay. So, um, but they did, of course, talk about, you know, the, the Trinity being back um, because, you know, George and Kevin and I, Trying to think, I mean, like we've all worked as Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman respectively, but I don't, you know, like I, I did a movie with Timmy Daly. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, we, uh, Kevin has worked with other Wonder Women, so like it's been a while since the three of us were on the same project. Awesome. So that was a really big treat. Yeah, that's yeah. that's really cool. Absolutely. Um, and uh, yeah, and all I was going to mention as far as other actors getting a chance to play two different roles, I mean, God, Michael Rosenbaum playing both Flash and Lex Luthor, for Christ's sake. Um, and it's so funny to see him now with hair. It always kills me, and it's great. I'm like, yeah, I was watching Paulson's interview. It's like, oh, look at him. He's got hair. That's great. And he <laughs> and he was so funny with this movie because, like, at one point, I think he tweeted out, like, what, my invitation got lost in the mail? <laughs> um, you know, yeah. I, I, you know, because people are like, wait, where's Flash? Sure. Where's Hawk Girl? And yeah, you know, it's like, yeah. hopefully they'll be in the next one. I mean, they're, you know, I don't, um, I, I want them all to be. Of it's course. not like I'm saying, hey, it's just the Trinity, you know, go find your own movie. It's like, I, to me, the, the fantasy is to have the seven of us together. No question. No question. And, um, yeah, and, and uh, you know, it's funny, again, George, and forgive me, now I don't have the cast in front of me. Um, who, yeah. Who plays Hawk Girl again? Who what? Who plays Hawk Girl again? Uh, Maria Canals Barrera. Right from the series, yeah. And I, I mean, I've seen Maria's on camera work before, and I'm like, oh, oh. that's who Hawk Girl is. Oh, that's who Superman yeah. is. And it's been great because, yeah, I mean, and and that's the great thing too about animation. And again, as opposed to stunt casting with celebrities, um, the anonymity allows the character to really breathe and be real. And I mean. Uh, Phil Lamar is very different in his regular walking around voice than what he does for Jon Stewart, but it's great. Oh my gosh! And watching watching the two of them uh, interact, I think from the Denver convention was hilarious, and it was just like you know, oh, there they are. There's John and Hawk Girl. That's and there's great. such and there's such good actors. I mean, that's yeah. the thing too. I mean, so many of you. Know, I think I'm the only one who doesn't have an on camera. I never pursued on camera or theatrical and. So, you know, they their acting chops are just, you know, right there. And watching Maria and Phil tackle that relationship and, you know, it it was really powerful. I mean, people talk about Wonder Bat and I loved this stuff with me and Kevin <laughs> because it's just it was fun. And Paul Dini wrote that brilliant episode, This Little Piggy, and it was flirtatious and sweet and yep. charming. Um, but, you know, I mean, Hawk Girl and Green Lantern really had the relationship. They really yeah. got, you know, had the whole thing. Absolutely. Um, you know, wink, wink, wink. And um, so, <laughs> I mean, they, they, it was just charming. I mean, it was just, anyway. Well, yeah, to see so in the good. future that they had, you know, a child and everything. I mean, it's, you know, in that, in that one. Well, that's story. what I always joke with people. I always joke with people. Like, I don't think anyone needs to watch Batman and Wonder Woman actually have <laughs> Like children and picking out schools and like who cares about to me their relationship and their magic is in the flirtation is that you know moonlighting I think we talk like yeah you know that sure. it's sweet and it's light and it's um it's kind of darling and I think that's that's how I like it I don't want it to get too you know somebody suggested the other day that I that there'd be a love triangle with with Batgirl, and I'm like, no oh, way. Interesting. No way. Oh, wow. Yeah, but no. Cause, cause, yeah, no. Because um, Joe Casey, one of the comic writers in the late 90s and early 2000s, had Bruce and Diana together. And I I always loved that. And, and even um, Tom King recently, with Joel Jones, wrote a Batman Wonder Woman story where they went to another dimension 
and the span of time in that dimension was years. And it was before uh, Bruce was going to marry Catwoman. And um, I don't think he necessarily referred to that period in Justice League when they were together. But there was definitely some like, oh, I could easily fall in love with this woman. And, you know, again, especially if we're the only two people that can relate to each other in this other dimension. And we've been together for 10 years. And what I've always liked about the relationship is the idea that Diana respects Bruce at this street level, mortal, non godlike, uh, you know, human being. And yeah, of course she was in love with Steve and with Trevor and everything, but um, I don't know. I always liked that. And also just the idea when you said triangle that they've also flirted with the idea that, you know, Clark and Diana have, you know, were together. Yeah. That, yeah, no, don't even go there with me because Clark and Diana. No, I like it. Talk to me, Wonder Woman. You know best. Tell me Uh, why. No, because Clark belongs. I mean, don't you think? Sure. Yes. If Clark is going to be with anybody, it's going to be with Lois. It, he, he's absolutely of course. not going to be with, <laughs> with Diana. And, you know, because to me, it's Christopher Reeve and it's, uh, it's uh, Margot Kidder. It's, it's that connection. So that's what I grew up with. And I'm with you. Anything, anything that's not that just feels like blasphemous to me. And I don't even know. Like I said, Batgirl. And I don't even know if it's Batgirl or Catwoman because that's like how out of the loop I am. Well, Who's no. You, ba- well, the, the thing, and I think it disturbed people when they released Killing Joke. And this is my own perception on this oh, thing. Oh, that's right. But, that's you know, right. there was some yeah, backlash yeah. because, you know, Barbara has always been with Dick Grayson, if anything, as far that's as right. the comics go. And they're like, and in fact, before the movie was released, I remember being at the press junket at San Diego and talking to Kevin and Tara and other people were asking, okay, we're hearing about this relationship with them. Mm -hmm. And again, Mm -hmm. in a very adult way, there's a very obvious love scene uh, that happens and people are like, hey, wait a minute. You know, Bruce is 30. Tara's, is she even a a love legal age? And there was that fear. And the great thing was, you know, uh, or I should say Barbara, excuse me, Tara got in front of it and it's like, hey, it's been a few years. And yeah, Tara's an adult, and she knows what she's doing, and Bruce is an adult. Right. He knows what he's doing, uh, you know, or Barbara and Bruce. Right. But but no, I get right. No, I, know I get what you it. Mean. Yeah, and also, um, I I would say what you said about Clark and Lois. That's what I loved about what Joe Casey brought to Justice League with Diana and Bruce in terms of again, uh, no, it's this human being that interests and fascinates them, and that's why they're together. And it was cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was even a great scene where. Diana invites Bruce to Mount Olympus with the gods and he's like hanging out with the gods and he's literally in a toga to dress appropriately with the gods and he's bored out of his mind and they're all being, you know, the kind of uh, uh, Caligula kind of, not Caligula, that's a little too harsh, but you know, that kind of laissez-faire Roman. I just love the idea of Batman out of his element, yes, you know, yes. of Bruce out of his element. It's just so brilliant to me to well, see him, you know, just <laughs> have to. Uh, have to deal you know it just i mean this, this little picky I, I that just, was the whole it's point so good yeah that's the point of this little picky it's like you know wait batman's yep. gonna gotta you know kind of step Dang. up and yes i know mm-hmm. well i'm i mean i appreciated you humming at the end i my blue i know i certainly <laughs> hope that's the, one of my go ahead <laughs> that that's one of my favorite moments because you know walking through the watchtower like that i just lo- see oh, that's yeah. what i love and paul dini captured it so beautifully and um you know so I, that's what I like. I see. I'm kind of. I like the wholesome approach to it. I. I, hear you. I, I don't. I don't like it to be too gritty or sure. too dark. Um, I think there's just so much darkness out there in the world, and so I get that it's escapist, and I get that it. it you know, it is good versus evil. So I understand evil is evil, but for me, for me, just me, I I prefer it to be um you know g rated pg rated rather than it to go you know to uh to adults i'm with you no and i agree with you and i and i think you're right and ultimately i don't think warner's i mean really it was surprising as as how far it went in killing joke uh but, but killing joke its entire story is a very adult story too right exactly so i get that but no and i and i agree with you and it's especially right now and i mean really the amount of young Batman and Wonder Woman fans, and especially, you know, discovering the character in the last couple of years with the movie. And, I mean, I'm assuming, you know, do you guys, forgive the personal question if it's too personal, do you guys get royalties for the cartoon? Yes. Good. 
We do. <laughs> yes, we do get residual. We do get. I think or residuals. Excuse say, me. Yes. Yeah, but you said royalties. It's so like it's so old school. <laughs> yeah, we, do get, we do. We do get residuals. Um, <laughs> You know, they have to play a thousand times or whatever until we see any money from it. But yeah, we do. Well, good news. It has been playing a thousand times. So that's good to hear. (laughs) No, that's honestly. I think I'm out some money. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I hope. I certainly hope so. Well, and also I kind of know compared to live action that, you know, animation acting has, you know, actors have always kind of gotten more jerked around than on camera. And again, this is what I'm saying. I'm saying this stuff. I'm, you know, I'm, right. I'm going to protect my friend. I'm, no, I'm, it's I'm definitely, not. it's, de- it's <laughs> definitely true. I mean, we, it's, it's, um, you know, you, you can certainly make a nice living, but it's not going to, for voiceover, you, the way you get rich is you do either many animated shows or you get a commercial that runs for five years and then you can buy a new house. Um, <laughs> but no, if you're just on one show, even if you're a series lead, it's, it's not, that lucrative and again um they're of the belief okay we've done our uh i'm trying to do the math you know uh 26 episodes or 52 mm-hmm. episodes and it's like all right time to move on to the next thing and very, yeah, and very sure. good cartoons have been canceled because of that god i remember the outcry when they had the green lantern solo series and you know i knew a lot of friends that were adult fans They're like well how come it's not being made anymore and it's like because they didn't sell the toys Oh, but what about the adult audience? I'm like, they're not going for the adult audience. It's a Y7 show. If they don't hit the demographic that they're looking for, they're like, okay, we tried. Time to move on to something else. And, you know, you had the 26 episodes. I know. Episodes. It's, it's, yeah, that's the business aspect yeah. of it. That's the business part. And that's why, um, you know, it's so important for – if people do want a reunion, it's so important to support this Justice League versus the Fatal Five because that does show the studio that there's an aud- a buying audience out there with you. Um, that it goes beyond just nostalgia and that they get a warm fuzzy feeling from seeing us on an interview show, but that they would actually pay to see us reunited again. So um, I don't want to sound like a broken record with it, but yeah, I mean that that's the you have to prove to Warner Brothers to DC that. There is a paying audience out there. Absolutely. And no, I'm glad you're saying that. And please feel free to say that as much as you need to, because you're right. (laughs) Well, and also, again, things have changed. I don't know if I've asked you this before, but when the show was retooled from Justice League to Justice League Unlimited, was it always part of the plan or did they have to almost resell the concept? And were you all as actors, did you know that you would continue? Because there was that last episode that tied into Batman Beyond. Uh, where t- right? No, Terry, we you know. we were not privy. Okay. Yeah, we go. weren't privy to any of it. Yeah. No, but Bruce, you know, Bruce loved writing it at um, Unlimited. And in fact, when we were at WonderCon and we were walking to our panel together, um, he said that working on Justice League and Justice League Unlimited were two of the happiest experiences of his professional life, and he loved doing the shows. So, no, we you know actors are never privy. <laughs> Okay. To it, and it's so funny when people say, "Ask me, well, why didn't you play Wonder Woman in that project, or are you yes. going to play Wonder Woman in this project?" And people are asking about animated se- Wonder Woman animated series or yes, Wonder Woman one of, animated feature. One of the questions and, we know, got. The Go thing on. Is, yes. Yeah, and so I mean, I would very few things would give me as much um, gratification as playing her in a Wonder Woman se- in a series or a feature. But I have no say in that. And sure. again, um, I've said in interviews before, I'm not considered a celebrity. And I think those gigs often go to bigger names. Um, so I'd be shocked if they came to me to do it. I, again, I would love to do it, but it's really not in my power um, to make that happen. And it's not for really any actor unless... They are a Chris Evans, um, sure. but for animation people, we you know you just don't get to say to pick and choose. You you know the fact that I get to play her 19 years after I started playing her, you know that's a gift, and I never lose sight of that. And I can't say, well, I'm going to do this and that, and, and I'm not going to do that. Um, you know, you just wait for that phone to ring, and that's just the life of an actor. That's you know, and I'll, I'll say obviously this is answering one of our questions. We got Will Warner. A PhD, apparently, Doctor Warner, I'll say, uh, asked, mm-hmm. "Would you like to obviously do another stand st- another standalone Wonder Woman animated movie? Have you done a standalone Wonder Woman movie? I know wasn't Carrie Russell the uh, Wonder Woman of the solo yes. movie? 
Yes, she she was. And um, and yeah, she was. And again, I, I wouldn't have expected that they'd come to me for that. I mean, I, I think the moment you have expectations that you're going to be the one, you, it's just like opening up your heart to you know, be crushed. I'm with you. Yeah. So I, tr- I try not to live in that space where I'm just expecting that it's going to be me. Most of the time I don't expect it because I, like, again, the reality of the business is that if they can get Carrie Russell or Susan Eisenberg and Carrie Russell's on Felicity and she does, <laughs> this was before the Americans, yes. they're going to go with that because it, it, it helps them with their audience. I don't particularly agree with that strategy. I think for the fans, um, who grew up with the Justice League? For so many of them, yeah. they have their own idea of the character. Um, but again, I'm not running the show I at the studio, so I, you know, I can't say. But I would love, love, love to do a solo animated movie series uh, ensemble. I just love playing this character and. This character in particular, the Justice League Wonder Woman, is, you know, she's she's my favorite. I've done it in many different iterations, um, and I've enjoyed all of them. But nothing compares to Justice League Wonder Woman. I'm with you. No, I'm definitely. And, Bru- and Bruce Tim and Bruce. Sure. Tim. I mean, he hired me. He gave me my start um, when I was sitting next to him, and I saw her come on the screen um, during the, you know, during WonderCon. You know it. I just squeezed his arm so tight, and, you know, I probably hurt him because it was, just, it was deeply it was it was deeply emotional to be there because he created that that wonderful. I remember going to the callback and seeing her because he had a picture of her and he showed me the picture. And he said, "This is what she's going to look like," and then he gave me some uh, you know two pages of of script and and he and Andrea had me read it and make a couple of adjustments and then that was it. And a couple of weeks later, I booked it. But you know, it's 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 very um, it's it's very dear to me to have to still be involved with him. That's in excellent. This. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I don't want you to spoil. And I, I, I'm sure you couldn't go into specifics, but this inspires another question. Given uh, the success, I'm assuming so far of DC Universe, the streaming channel, mm-hmm. um, and I yeah. and obviously they're doing Young Justice, and I know that there are other animated series in the works. Um, have are you able to even say if you've been approached for any other DC Universe characters or any projects that we might see on DC Universe online? No, I have not been approached. And, um, you know, that, again, I think we have to see how this all plays out with Justice League versus the Fatal Five, sure. how well that does. You know, there's there's also, like, this these other stories being told at Warner Brothers with other actors in these parts, with, with other sure. Wonder Women and Batman. And so, again, like, I'm not privy to those meetings. I'm not privy to what's selling and what's not selling. I don't have any um, foot in the door in that way. So I, I have to rely on, you know, my agent and the fans and uh, my relationships as they are to – to get me the next gig. And so I hope, I hope there's some, some more things in the future, but I don't know. Okay. Uh, Rich uh, Dats asks, uh, was there ever talk of, uh, or development of a Wonder Woman solo animated series with you? No. Okay. And again, um, I don't think that there was a sense of how much of an audience was out there that connected to these characters and, and the voice actors that played them. I, I think you and I, when we talk, when did we talk last time? How many years ago was that? Um, I think 17, I think 2017. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you were doing the online game. I think back then. Oh yes. And that very much is like a, you know, a, um, homage to justice league wonder woman because the people that worked on that, grew up with Justice League. And I think my frustration and one of the things that really drew me to um, trying to get the reunion and the Comic-Cons have us reunited at the the various Mm Comic-Cons was because I did know how much it mattered to the audience and to the fans that these particular actors um, voice these characters. And so it's become like a... um, like a passion of mine truly to make that happen. And again, I can only go so far with it. 
as a voice actor and, you know, uh, I don't have that much sway. But if we can all combine forces, I mean, hopefully it can happen. Again, the power of social media and, 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 yes. that, and that the studios are finally – I mean, there's always been letter writing campaigns. Star Trek is notorious in a great way of bringing the show back in the 60s for a third season. And that's the old days when, you know, you had to put a stamp on an envelope and let NBC know, hey, we like this show. Please keep it on. And that's the great thing now about social media and, you know, the immediacy of an audience to step up and say, no, 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 we like this. We want more of this. Pay attention to what we're telling you. And because I know that from the start of the direct-to-video animation Business. I mean, I've seen them at the con since they started announcing the movies back with the uh, mm-hmm. Superman Doomsday. It was like, if you like these, buy them and let us know, because the only way we're going to get greenlit is, as you say, when when they see that no, this stuff is selling. People want this, and so that's great. And I and I agree with you. And again, uh, well, here I'll transition to Geek to Me Radio, and I'm expecting a very modest answer, but regardless, I'll let you know. That uh, he was wanted to know why you're the best woman Wonder Woman out there. Why do you think you're the best <laughs> Wonder Woman? Out there? You know, that's my buddy James. Um, that's Geek to Me Radio, James Enstel, who who has a radio show, and I I'm a frequent guest on his radio <laughs> show. He li- he's out of St. Louis. And, cool. Um, you know, he's just being adorable. So <laughs> thank you, James, for the shout out, brother Radio Man. All right, I like it, James. That's awesome, man. I'm glad you uh, you participated. Now, uh, Sean O'Halloran asked. Will Wonder Woman meet gods and monsters, Wonder Woman, in battle? And who would win? So I'm assuming that's uh, Carrie Russell's movie. Or no, was that your game? Is that your online game? Uh, No. Well, no. And, you know, I can't answer that because that may happen. Ah! But, again, I, I... You know, wink, wink. I don't know what's going to oh, happen that would be in the great. future. God, you know. It would be amazing. Oh, you know. It tr- would be amazing. It would be great to get... Uh, Bruce Greenwood, for example, who played Batman in Batman Year One, and have Kevin, and have them, and the way that they've played with alternate universes. God, that Justice Lords episode, the two You hear, you know, I've heard so much about the Justice Lords, and people are like, one of the just... So, (laughs) you know, I think it's like, there's so many things coming back and revisited, and and there's so much... I think people are just (laughs) really needing nostalgia... Um, they're nostalgia fed right now and those warm, fuzzy feelings of childhood. So, you know, the sky's the limit sure. with all of this stuff. But I I hate to disappoint people, but I don't have um, any inside information. OK, it's cool. And like I said, I, that might be the answer to a lot of these questions. But again, you're seeing that. Yeah, I know the audience absolutely wants more of you as Wonder Woman. And God, I'll tell you, Kevin, when he played both Justice Lords Batman and, and regular Batman having these conversations and brilliant. Oh God. Brilliant. Wouldn't, wouldn't, yeah, mom, brilliant. And, wouldn't mom and dad be proud of you in your, in your perfect society where basically it's martial law in Gotham city. And, and it's just, Oh, I, I, I love those kind of well-written and well-acted character moments. And it would be great to see you with like injustice, uh, Diana. And, and, you know, let's see you do the, uh, you know, the, the Spock with a beard double roll. <laughs> <Stuff like that. laughs> Well, you know, I mean, Injustice Diana is like that's an example of, you know, not playing wholesome and not and really playing a baddie. Yeah. Um, and um, I, I, I love doing the game because it's just it's an you know it's a collaboration. Sure. So I love the people on that game, but at the same time, I told them at the end of our my last session that they owe me a, you know, um, a good Wonder Woman uh, oh. video game. <laughs> I understand. You know, I, again, because of my age, I stopped gaming, doing online gaming or, or even desktop gaming uh, in like 1998 because I do so many other freelance things and it's such a time suck. It is. And, and, it I, is. and I really do love gaming, but it's like I, I, I'm making shit. I don't have time to play. But, right, but, right. But I, uh, I get it and, and truly I loved Injustice so much I went to one of those – YouTube videos where they essentially give you all the story moments and the battle moments. And I watched, you know, over a couple of days, the three plus hours of the entire game and it was great. And so I got to watch all of your performances and uh, yeah, both injustice and injustice too. So, yeah. And that was a fa- and that was fascinating because they were doing the mo They were capturing your face. They were doing mocap. Wow. That. So, so that's you, you, you know, my, so my expression, yeah, and it's, I mean, you know, it's not like she and I, <laughs> it's not like looking into a mirror, but I mean, the, the, the facial expressions 
are um, all the actors did that. That's and wonderful. so the camera's right on your face, right up close as you're doing your performance. So it's it's um, it's pretty intense. It really is. Well, and again, the, which worked for the character because well, she's really intense. Absolutely. And again, it's that um, evolution of gaming now where the animation yes. is so realistic that oh, that yeah, again, they, they they've upped the storytelling. So sure. so I am envious of the people A that have time to game but also, you know, have the ability. I mean, I am like I tried to play Arkham City and I had Batman walking in circles. I, I couldn't get it. I, I can't <laughs> handle it. I'm the worst. I'm the worst. I mean, they <laughs> they um we did this event one time and it, you know, it was a bunch of uh, a bunch of us went from Injustice and I said to them, I said, "Listen, I'm not a gamer, so I I really hope that you're not going to ask me to play. No, no, don't worry about it. We're just going to have everyone come and talk about, you know, your voiceover career. And I'm like, great, that I'll do. And I get there and they're like, okay, we're going to have you play. And I'm like, what? (laughs) And so I had to play the game and it was pathetic. I mean, there's Wonder Woman and I'm just like, oh my God. I mean, it was... (laughs) It was so fun, and yet it was so embarrassing. I'm with you. Because I, I was really bad at it. I hear I was you. Really, no. But I was like, I, I, I don't have any experience with it. I've got to, I've got to you know, if I do another game, I'm going to play it. That's cool. I, well, you know, uh, Chris Eliopoulos, a great artist and letterer in the biz. Yes. We always, we always talk. He's like, you know, they need to do like an adult class for people our age to like master the uh, current controls of games. And it's totally true because, yeah, man, I mean, I'm, I'm from the classic arcade joystick era. And certainly the games that I did play, I'd play with my mouse, you know, and my desktop computer. And yet Wing Commander, it was like the last like regular game that I played. And I loved it. It was awesome. I'm a huge sci-fi fan. The movie sucked, but the games were great, you know. But uh, no, I, I can't I can't do it. Like I said, literally, I'm, I had Batman walking around circles. I'm like, all right, I give up. Because this is embarrassing. I know. And have you found? <laughs> have you followed any of this Critical Role stuff that's going on? Talk to me. No. Like Critical Critical Role. So it's um, uh, well, no, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to talk. We'll talk about it off. Uh oh, spoilers. Because I'll sound like such an idiot. No, 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 no. I'm, I am not doing. I, I haven't been asked to do an episode, but it just like become this gigantic. Um, you know. It's huge. It's like this this huge thing in the business right now. That um, we'll talk about it off. Okay. <laughs> we'll, oh, I'm intrigued. I, yeah, all right. we'll talk about it. Off all right. All good. Okay. That's yeah, funny. Our, but your do audience I'm, will know about okay, it. Okay. I was going to critical role and Matthew Mercer and, and people will know about it. Very cool. Excellent. All right. I look forward to it. That's good. Um, all right. And yeah, I mean, everyone is asking. Barbara Gordon Gordon asks a couple questions. Uh, and again, I think you've answered them. What's next for Bruce Tim and you guys? Uh, all of you awesome vi- uh, voice actors and also wanted to know when will we have our favorite cartoon back again and of course I mean Justice League Animated and yeah we all you know we all we all uh, are on the same page of that but I just want to acknowledge that uh, here's another fan that wants more so yeah. well you know that's you know that's it. I think the fans and I again a lot of them have become friends I think they know how much I appreciate them and how much I feel like we're in this together. So if there is a reunion with all seven of us, um, they will have so much to, you know, it, it'll be them. It's like justice, you know, coming back. It'll be the fans that have made it happen. I hear you. So, you know, here, hopefully the next time I speak to you, um, we'll be talking about a Justice League reunion movie. Okay. And eventually I want to ask about any projects that are on the horizon for you that you can talk about. And a lot of times I know you can't. Well, you know how long it's been? I can't. And there's there are a couple of things that I can't talk about either one. And <laughs> let me just say this. This was such a hard secret. I got to say, Justice League versus Fatal Five was such a hard secret because, like I said, when I went to do ADR and I saw that, you know, that it was going to be Bruce's version of Justice League, mm-hmm. Wonder Woman and and Superman and Batman. I mean, that was something I wanted to share so badly and I couldn't. And so it was such a relief when I was able to tell people about it. So Excellent. you know, give me another year and a half when I can talk about <laughs> what's going on now until these things are animated and until we're allowed to talk about it. it, it it's usually a long way. Well, I know one recent project you did and we didn't have a chance to talk about it on air. Um you read one of the Star Trek Discovery books. I did. And that's cool. That was yeah. I did the audio. I did the audio book. It was my first audio book. I'd never done it before. And wow. To, yeah, yeah. And to and I to this moment, I don't know because it was just an offer. It came out of nowhere, and I don't know how how I got it. Um, 
And it was so, it was so brilliant doing it because I didn't know much about Star Trek. Uh I mean, I knew about Star Trek, but not, not really. And it was such a beautifully written book and I loved reading it and I enjoyed it so much. But at the same time, those characters and saying those names, (laughs) I I can't like, they gave me a cheat sheet with all the characters and it was like 75 names that I had to learn. And they gave it to me five days before I was going to record. So it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was, um, it was really intense and it was so much fun. But again, if I were to do it again, um, I'd probably have a lot more lead time and be way more relaxed than I was during the recording of that. Did you, and again, if anyone out there knows how I booked it, can you let me know? Cause I don't know how I booked it. Hilarious. Well, because I, yeah, I was wondering, and it's interesting to hear you say that because I also remember, and I don't remember which specific cast member in Rob Paulson's interview with you guys, um, who was talking about doing, maybe it was George. I think it was George. Who, it is. George does them, but George, like, he's, oof, he's serious about it. He really does all these books, and then, and then he does, um, like, all the characters, which is phenomenal. Yes, yes. So, Okay. Oh, no problem, buddy. It's okay. That, uh, when I just said that, it turned Siri. So Siri is on my cell phone now telling me what character means. <laughs> <laughs> and that's happened to me. I love I love when that happens. Oh, my God. I know. Our... Yeah, so George, George does all the characters. He does all the different voices. When I did the Star Trek um, book... Um, they, you know, they wanted me to do a little bit different sound, you know, like, so one character was sounded a little bit different, but it wasn't like, okay, now go full out for this. It was just slight variation. I understand. George, um, George. But it was, it was like. You there? Yeah. Okay. Are you? I, I bet we're both waiting for each other to speak. <laughs> no, you, you go ahead and speak, please. And then I'll, I'll make my comment. You know, George does this all the time. This is like one of the things he does. Um, I think on a daily basis. And to me, it was just like this outlier experience where somebody said, hey, you have this offer to do this. And I thought, are you kidding? I would love sure. to do it. And it was five days of intensive six-hour sessions. Wow. Um, yeah, with, six like, hours. With Jesus. very little. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah, it is. Very little prep t- with very little prep time. So, again, if I ever do it again, hopefully I'll have some more prep, you know, more prep time than five days hey, to really, really go deep with it. On radio, I do a six-hour shift on, on the news cycle, and I'm talking uh, for uh, 90 seconds every 10 minutes. And that's nothing compared to what you were doing for six hours a day for five days. And I even thankfully have a couple of days off in between shifts sometimes. I'm working Friday and Saturday, and then I'm not working until the following Friday, uh, as far as radio goes. And yeah, I believe me, I, you know, in that last hour, my head's throbbing. And I'm like, all right, am I done? Can I stop talking now, please? So I, know, I can only imagine. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. And then you go home and you're just like, you don't want to talk on the phone. You want, you don't want to talk to your partner. You just like, you're just like, okay, you know, I mean, I, you know, thank God my dogs aren't saying, talk to me, mama. Oh. Um, it was just, it was, it was, you just go home and you rest your voice and you go back and you do it. But again, I only, I'm not like, um, you know, I only did it once and it was only five days and, and I got through it. It was fine. But George does it all the time and it's, it's really rigorous. Well, I hope if moving forward, you get a chance to kind of stretch and do what George does. And I was going to say, not, not George, uh, uh, Newberry um, or Newburn. how do you... <laughs> How do you say it? Newburn. Newburn, yes. So I wasn't – when I started to say George, I didn't mean to refer back to George Newburn. I meant to talk – when George Takei and James Doohan, oh. when they've done Star Trek novels in the past, they have acted. And, you know, you, you kind of hear Takei's Shatner and you kind of hear Takei's Nimoy. And James Doohan was an old Canadian broadcasting company radio actor before he got into TV. And, in fact, in the uh, Star Trek animated series Beyond Playing Scotty – played a lot of other characters that would show up for, you know, very specific episodes. And, and See, that's just the best. Yeah. That's the best. Yeah. Well, that's June for a uh, Mel Blanc territory, you know? Right. And, like, that's, like, it gives, I'm sure it gave the fans just such, you know, such chills to hear these voice, their voices doing it. Are you in John DiMaggio's uh, documentary? I know that voice. No. Okay, I didn't think so. No. Right. I think Kevin is, though, but I'm not sure. Makes I think sense. Kevin is. But, you know, Kevin, like, for as long as we've been doing this, which is 19 years, Kevin has, I think it's almost 30 for Kevin Insane. because Batman the Animated Series came, like, in the 90s, and then Superman, 
right. animated series with Tim Daly, sure. and then Justice League. So Kevin has been voicing Batman for a hundred years. Well, <laughs> and not only not only in animation, but also the games. And that's why I understood yes, when the he Arkham games, when he yeah. yeah, and when he and Mark were talking about you know Killing Joke might be it. I get it because yeah, I mean, like you said, it's been several decades that. That uh, Kevin has been playing Batman consistently, and um, I don't want you to speak for Kevin, but do you know in conversation, uh, it sounds like everybody is up for the idea of continuing the cast if the opportunity presents itself. Has doing the Fatal Five, or what? Has Kevin had a change of heart in terms of continuing as Batman? Kevin, I think, would do the character as I would, as George, as Maria. Any of us would do these characters for the rest of our careers. That's awesome. I mean, as long as long as there's an audience um, that wants to hear us and a studio that wants to hire us, Kevin will, you know, will do Batman and I'll do Wonder Woman and you know, on and on yeah. and on. Um, again, you know, it's Kevin and I talked about it as actors. We don't have that. We don't have the power to, you know, say, we'll do this one, not that one. So, no, as long as people are interested in our voices, we want to do it. Very cool. All right, back to questions. Um, All right, and of course, Lady Hawk asks, and I don't want you to spoil, but she asks any Wonder Bat moments in Justice League versus Fatal Five. You know, there aren't a lot, and I really want, you know, I don't, there aren't a lot of Wonder Bat moments, but again, (laughs) this was not conceived as a movie that was going to go there, I'm with you. I think it, I think if we did get a Justice League reunion movie, um, I would like to say <laughs> that I will do my best to make sure there are some really fabulous Wonder Bat moments in that movie. That's awesome. Um, I'm go. I would make sure I would talk to those writers. I don't even know who the writers would be yet, but you can bet. I'm going to talk to those writers and say we need a couple of Wonder Bat moments. I need them. The fans want them. So, like, at this point, come on. We got it. But, no, in this movie, it's – I don't want to mislead people. There aren't – there aren't – I mean, there are scenes together. Sure. And there's there's sweetness. But, no, there isn't a, like, a huge Wonder Bat moment like in yeah. um, this little Pig. this Little Piggy yeah. or anything like that. No. I hear you. There's no kiss on the cheek in the movie. <laughs> No, I hear. And also, I had never heard Wonder Bat as a like a Benefer or all the other great uh, relationship uh, yeah. amalgams that people have come up with. And again, that's the strength of the fans. For me, when I knew that Justice League and Justice League Unlimited had reached a real cultural moment was when they made the Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern movie. And much like the reaction to some Spider-Man live action movies of where's Miles Morales? When is he going to get his shot? Everybody with the Green Lantern movie is like, why isn't John Stewart in this movie? And even, right. you know, Neil Adams himself, one of the great DC artists who's, you know, right. a couple generations older than us is saying, hey, where's John Stewart? Everybody, millions of fans know John Stewart. And it's like, yeah, 100%. And again, taking nothing away from Ryan Reynolds, what they attempted to do with the Green Lantern movie. But yeah, that's it. I mean, John was third string Green Lantern before the right. cartoon. And it's like, Mm -hmm. you know, again, a whole generation, it's like, no, that's our Green Lantern. He's on the front line. And in fact, it's acknowledged in the film having Jessica Cruz versus Jon Stewart in the same way of having Miss Martian as opposed to John Jones. uh, Right. You know, and it's, and that's great. And also, it, you know, again, we, like you said, it wasn't conceived to be the original cast, but it's cool that they acknowledge it, give a chance for it to introduce these new characters. And it will be great to see Phil and and I, again I forgive me I don't remember who played Jessica. Well, and also like maybe Miss Martian and Jean. Yes. You know, maybe there's like how great would that yes. be if we got to see that? To, you know, if we got to see them together. Absolutely. So Absolutely. it's it's all potential. Yep. And um, you know, I'm going to trust Bruce Tim to or whoever writes the 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 movie to you know fill in those blanks for us. That's great. That's excellent. All right, I've, I've, I've lost my list of questions, so I have to go back now, one second, as we're talking. Okay. But as we do, I, I do, uh, honestly, back to your Star Trek Discovery book performance, um, it is a great book, and I'm a huge hyper critic of Discovery. I don't, uh, I think from a story standpoint, they are not as successful as the people that have written Discovery novels have been. And it's disappointing, mm-hmm. for, and I'm saying this again, this is me saying this. Um, 
Right, right. So, but yeah, but the great thing is the books are good. And, hey, Next Generation, as iconic as it was, it was really clunky the first two years. And they had to kind of write things. In a way that, uh, and I'll spit it back to you guys, uh, in a way that Justice League, really from season one, every every two-parter, I mean, the season, the first season was filled with a lot of two-parters. Um, but A lot. And three-parters. Yes, absolutely, my God. But, I mean... Literally, from day one, as far as the final product, because of the love of, of everyone behind the scenes and you actors getting it, uh, you know, and, and delivering the material and ultimately the finished product, it's like uh, there was never a misstep. This this show never jumped the shark. It really did. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> because look, who, I mean, seriously, look who was involved. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I really want to you talk know? to Alan Burnett at some point. Um, I've talked to him at cons. Good luck. I know. Good, yeah, and now he, and he's retired now. Well, maybe he'd be more available I, you know, now that he's retired. I don't know. Yeah, but that's truly. a great point. You know, um, that's a great point. Yes. Will Dennis, one of the uh, Vertigo editors at DC, DC's very and I and I say this all the time on War Balloon, and I don't begrudge them for this policy, but they don't let their editors do interviews the way they do writers and artists. And you know, I mean, okay. I've been a fan of Will's and. You know, he's kind of like a Bruce Tim in terms of, you know, putting the, the team together to make a book. And I always appreciated his eye for artists and writers. And I wanted to get more in his head in terms of, man, some of the people that you've discovered and nurtured through their first significant books. It's really an impressive list. And he's always he was always kind to me. And he's like, I can't talk. I'm sorry. DC won't let me talk. And I'm like, well, there will come a day where you're no longer working for DC. I hope we'll have that conversation then. And he laughed. And he goes, oh, yeah, sure. And when they made the big move to Burbank and some of the New York people didn't make the move, Will was one of them. And I said, here I am. Okay. I'm like, and believe me, if you need time to decompress, I'm not asking you to do it tomorrow. And he said, yeah, give me six months, but I will definitely talk to you. And true to his word, he's been on several times since. And we have great conversations. And we do. We talk about the old stuff. And again, I don't know how NDAs work today and how much Alan can or can't reveal Oh, no. I think, I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't know him um, I think I've only met him a couple of times, but no, I think that there's, I mean, he, he would be talk about amazing guests like Andrea Romano. Yes. I mean, these people have such rich histories yes. and, and we're, you know, um, they're stars in, in the industry. So yeah, he would be amazing no, to interview. It, would, it really would. It'd be a pleasure. And, and again, the evolution of animation. And that's why I've really appreciated the relationship I cultivated with James Tucker and James has been great. Yes. And, you know, luckily I've had, I've had enough uh, media roundtables at cons where, um, you know, we only did, I told you, me and me, uh, James and Mike Jelenic did a nice phone interview a few years ago uh, during the Brave and Bold years and stuff. And since, it's always been fun. Because, again, these people like Alan, uh, like Stan, another guy who goes back to the original animated series, certainly like Bruce, to see the evolution of the animated product. And take us back to those yes. early days and probably a lot of corporate no's back then in terms of what they wanted to do. And not in any negative way to like, you know, say, oh, those guys were jerks or idiots or whatever. But really like everyone understanding on the corporate side, no, this is special and let these creatives evolve and do the kind of stories they want to do. And again, Bruce, Andrea, you know, all these people have seen every step and I'm sure, you know. Every step. Yeah. So that's great. No, and yeah. I, that that story, I'd like to see that story told. It doesn't have to be me. I'd certainly love to be the person they tell it to for my purposes. But yeah, I mean, and that's why I love Rob's. Uh, it was great. Honestly, that's the first time I've ever watched Rob, Rob do his animation show. And I know he's going to do uh, Terrificon, the Connecticut show. And uh, hopefully uh, the organizers are like, you know, man, I think we can get you Rob Paulson. And I'm like, I would love to talk to Rob Paulson, especially now seeing his show. <laughs> Because yeah, it's great to have that perspective and everything. Which I think, which I think is, I think the show is actually over now. Oh, um, I'm fairly certain. Yeah, but but I will say this: he, he, he. I mean, that interview was so special because he was so dear and supportive in that interview. So it wasn't like we were. I mean, he's an actor and he knows what it's like to have this beloved show yep. and have fans care about it. They, you know, they did me a solid. The Nerdist and Rob. You know, allowing us to come on and, um, you know, talk about our experiences with the old show and all of that and giving us that platform. That was 
you know, that was really generous on their, their end. Um, and he was, you know, we, you and I talked about it, you know, before we started the interview, I mean, he was so lovely and so, I didn't know him very well. You and I just was so blown away by his warmth. I really was. No, it was cool. And again, well, again, you guys are all peers. He he knows what it's like to be in this experience, and that's why I really appreciated hearing him do this. I'm always bummed. Chase Masterson used to have a great podcast uh, years ago, and really around the early days of of podcasting, around 2006. And um, I've I've told her at conventions, I'm like, I really miss your podcast because. You know, you bring your perspective of being so tied to Star Trek in these conversations. I said, you know, it's it's the kind of interview perspective that others don't have. So, you know, all of your mm-hmm. conversations are so unique. And I'm going to seek out more episodes of Rob's show if that's the end of it. I mean, thank God this stuff lives online. Um, so, yeah. I'll, oh, it does. You know. and, and, and in fact, it was a paid service um, oh. for a while. And, like, you, you could do try a trial um, when our show aired originally, you could join it in a trial on a trial basis. Um, but it was part of the Nerdist. It was one of their shows, and it was. I- I'm fairly certain, um, like there was a membership to it. Okay. I don't quite no, remember because we, we 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 recorded that a while back. I was going to ask how long. And so ago? when people were thinking, yeah, it was like mm, a year. Again, it was just all trying to build momentum for the jail reunion. So sure. you know, probably about a. Year, like a year ago, I would well, say. Well, thank God it's on YouTube. Um, now. And then, of yeah. course, I know that was like I didn't expect that when I saw them reposting it. I'm like, wow, look at! I, I didn't expect it to have another life. So I'm um, I'm really grateful that they repo- that the Nerdist yeah. and Rob put it back out there. It was great. Well, and it's like you said, it supports this campaign to get more of the original cast together for more Justice League projects. And, you know, I mean, that's, believe me, I get it. And, uh, you know, maybe I was a knucklehead originally and didn't make Word Balloon and more of a premium site. But I really do believe in that whole Johnny Appleseed, one listener at a time kind of thing. And also the old uh, broadcast model of, uh, I'll let sponsors pay for this. And thank God crowdfunding has right. evolved and I've got my Patreon and I've got a good segment of of the audience uh, supporting me through Patreon, and that's terrific. And I genuinely, I, I thank them every episode, and I mean it. It's 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 huge. But I really do want as many people because I do think this kind of uh, programming is so new and deserves the widest audience, and will achieve riches down the line for everyone involved. And I, I you know, again, I it would be great if I could do Word Balloon full time, and you know, have that be my only concern and, and enjoy it. But as I told you off the air, and I've said this on the air as well. Every opportunity I've gotten in terms of working with the Science Channel and doing the show Profits of Science Fiction or doing a couple of documentaries where I'm a talking head, it's all come from the podcast. It's, it, nothing has come from my radio work. And radio certainly gave me this foundation, but as we were talking both being freelancers and kind of having to hustle to get jobs and stuff like that, it's that's fine. We've built our fan base, and thankfully through social media – and things like YouTube and the ability for more fans to hear our content or watch our content, it's its only grown our fan base. And then they will follow you to that next project. I wonder how many of the Justice League fans, as they're listening to this, know that you've read this Star Trek book. And I absolutely encourage people to check it out. <laughs> So, Thank you. Sure, that buddy. was a really good shout out. Thank you. Oh. I appreciate that. <laughs> hey, man, as I told you, we're on the same team. We're, we're all trying to do the same stuff here, and it's in our various ways. So, no, I appreciate it. I know that wasn't a question. That's a That was a long statement, but uh, absolutely. absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, are you? Do you want to wrap up? I, I, I feel like I don't want to overtax you if you're. Um, I probably should sure, only because I have uh, two puppies who are standing up <laughs> and I think it's time for them to, uh, to, go out and walk. to uh, do their business. Absolutely. Yeah, to do their business. I'm so I you. probably should. All right, buddy. Up. Hey, seriously, way to go. Again, if people want the hard Blu-ray or DVDs, they come out on Tuesday the 16th. Um, if it's okay with you, Susan, I'm telling you now that I was going to flip this and put this out for Friday for the weekend. And um, help promote, obviously. I mean, again, you can buy it right now if you want to stream it and you just want your copy in the cloud. Sure. It is available, and that's what I did to prepare for this conversation. But as always, love talking to you, and I'm, I'm so proud of you in spearheading this, this you know, campaign. And, uh, yeah, man, everyone, you've heard, you've heard Susan say it, and me too. 
It needs your support if you really want more Justice League stuff. And that's really been the majority of the questions we got was, you know, will there be more? How much more are you guys going to do? Is it possible? <laughs> and it's we, we all feel this way, and that's great. And I know, you're uh, again, the actors are the last to know, but thank God you're out there yeah. and support the product. And they're listening. They're paying attention to what you're doing. So support Justice League versus the Fatal Five and uh, help my friend out here uh, keep being Wonder Woman, Susan Eisenberg. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, we got to let her walk the dog. Great questions, everybody. Really appreciate it. Um, most of them did revolve around the obvious of what's next. I mean, you know, when are, when are all of you getting back together? And Susan, I think, uh, gave us those answers within the conversation. So if you didn't hear your question read, I do apologize. But thank you for uh, jumping at the opportunity. And Susan was incredibly delighted that you all jumped in and had uh, questions to ask. And I know she thanks you as well. And I thank Susan for uh, her friendship and uh, giving me another great episode of Word Balloon. I hope you enjoyed it today. All brought to you by the League of Word Balloon listeners. Subscribe to Word Balloon via Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash Word Balloon. Thank you for your support, League of Word Balloon listeners. I got my own league. Does that make me uh, Oberon from uh, the old Boahaha Justice League years? Or am I Snapper Car to my League of Word Balloon listeners? I have no idea. But uh, also, Word Balloon brought to you by Aftershock Comics, a great comic book company that I'm pleased likes the Word Balloon product so much that they are like, hey, we want to sponsor you. Fantastic. I happen to like Aftershock books. I've liked them since my first exposure to them through things like American Monster from uh, the great Brian Azzarello and Eduardo Riso, and uh, uh, things like Jackpot from uh, Ray Fox. Uh, these are early Aftershock products. They also uh, claimed... Uh, publishing rights to The Art of Jim Starlin, a tremendous art book featuring Jim Starlin's great work over the years. And there's stuff that they've been putting out in the last couple of years, like Baby Teeth from Donny Cates, A Walk Through Hell from Garth Ennis, Dark Ark from Cullen Bunn, and of course, Marguerite Bennett's Animosity, which will be featured as uh, Aftershock's free comic book day coming up next month. I hope to talk to Marguerite before then. And also uh, more great issues that just came out this year things like Stronghold from Phil Hester and Ryan Kelly and Dark Red from my buddy Tim Seeley Out of the Blue, a great military graphic novel from Garth Ennis and also uh, Oberon, different Oberon Shakespearean Oberon, a supernatural series from Ryan Parrott great stuff from Aftershock Comics in the weeks ahead we'll talk to more Aftershock creators about their books you don't have to wait. Check out full story descriptions, preview pages, and the diamond codes on these books to order through your local shop at AfterShotComics.com. Thanks for listening to Word Balloon. Check out our other episode that we've dropped today featuring uh, my buddy Paul Kupperberg talking about uh, the Doom Patrol, his own writing of the team in the DC Comics, but also the great new DC Universe uh, streaming television series. And uh, they give a big nod to Paul's Doom Patrol characters that he introduced in the 70s and 80s in one of the Doom Patrol episodes. In addition to that, Paul has a great Kickstarter uh, featuring some uh, old material from Charlton Comics and Archie and new material from Charlton Neo, which is uh, the new imprint that uh, Paul has created with others and uh, puts out some great books. Also, my dear friend Brian Crowley, a great Chicago creator who has taken his web series Hamster Rage has a Kickstarter to turn it into a physical book, and it's worth your attention as far as listening to the interview and also possibly your support. It's a lot of fun, and uh, great to talk to Brian as well. Paul Kupperberg and Brian Crowley on the other episode of Word Balloon that dropped today on Friday. Uh, if you're in Chicago, I hope you're having a great time at the Star Wars celebration, and um, I hope Word Balloon will uh, give you uh, comfort on the trip back home after hanging out in Chicago. I hope you have a great time. It's tax weekend. And so uh, if you need a little uh, getaway as far as listening while you're doing your taxes, I hope Word Balloon provides the soundtrack for that and entertains you with these great conversations. And, uh, you know, we're just getting started in April. I know we're midway there, but lots of other great conversations coming this month from Word Balloon. Don't miss it. Make sure you head to wordballoon.com and the various platforms where you get the Word Balloon podcast to see what's coming next. Word Balloon is a copyright feature of Shaky Productions, copyright 2019.